that I was stuck in the traffic and I saw an old man. He was unarmed. He wasn't doing anything. And the policeman put his gun in his head and shot him. And I saw his head exploding in front of me. In February 2011, amidst the broader Arab Spring, huge pro-democracy demonstrations uh, broke out in Bahrain. The government ultimately met those demonstrations with a very severe crackdown. Naziha Saeed witnessed uh, an unarmed protester being shot and killed at very close range by a police officer. After you witnessed the police officer uh, shoot the elderly man, did you report publicly on what you had seen? I tweeted what I saw a few minutes later when I when I drove a little bit far away from the body. Subsequently, she was arrested um, after having tweeted and given interviews about what she witnessed. A woman police officer and many other police women was involved in torturing me and and beating me and mistreating me and humiliating me. How many police officers did you identify as having abused you? I identified around four. Only one was sent to court and she got acquitted later on. What we found is that security personnel are in no way being investigated or prosecuted meaningfully for human rights abuses. When the protest began, people gathered at the fair roundabout, and as a result of some clashes between the protesters and the security force forces, some people were injured. At that time, uh, the government refused to treat those people. I felt obligated with some other colleagues that we need to do something for those people. At the end of the day, they're humans, and they need to be treated. Nada Dave is an oral surgeon who was arrested essentially for protesting and tending to protesters who had been injured. I didn't know for what reason I was arrested, and uh, I was kept in detention for 50 days. Can you describe how you were treated while you were detained? I was beaten, I was kicked, and I was electrocuted. I was able to identify my torturer. Um, I told all of these information to the, to the prosecutor, and unfortunately, nothing came out of this. She was never found guilty. All charges were dropped against her. And um, on the contrary, she was promoted. Nabil Rajab, a longtime human rights defender and a member of a Human Rights Watch advisory board, was given a two-year jail sentence for attending protests that had not been approved in advance by the government. The court verdicts don't conclude in any way that he was uh, involved in, in violence of uh, any sort at all. Nonetheless, he got a, a two-year jail term, which is more than some of the security personnel have received for killing people. So uh, the picture is very clear for us. Whenever it is to do with demonstrator, the sentences are very harsh, very severe. And when it, it is to do with the police officer responsible for torture, they are either acquitted or they are receiving very, very, very uh, light sentences. The U.S. and the U.K. have too often been muted in their criticism of Bahrain's human rights record. In fact, recently the U.K. cited judicial reform as something the Bahrainis are doing well. Anyone who examines the court documents that we looked at for the basis for our findings knows that judicial reform is essentially a disaster in Bahrain.